in in 2001. We put in 3.6 kilowatt of Siemens panels. Our angle is about 32 degrees, which is ideal. We're at 39 degrees north of the equator here, and so 39 minus 7, about 32, is pretty optimal for this climate. So we get about nine months out of the year of good sun. It made sense to turn into a grid tied system until battery technology gets to be 90% efficient lithium ion battery, it's still going to be better to be tied into the utility. You can be tied into the utility and use the utility for your advantage to sell back to them and use them as an infinite battery. That is the best way. This is the Exeltec uh, 10,000 watt inverter. It's wired for split phase 120, 240. We can power large appliances with if we have to. If we have a problem with the utility going down, we can power off of this. The battery is in here. It's about a uh, 1600 amp hour battery at uh, 48 volts. It's a UASA lead acid deep cycle battery. It's made to last about 15 years. Power comes in from the solar panels, goes through, disconnect. There's a charge controller and then it goes to the battery out of the battery through a 250 amp disconnect and to this inverter over here, it's a Xantrex. This is a battery-based grid-tied model. These have been proven in the field, maybe not the very most efficient, but very reliable and durable. They required us to add an extra grid-tied interface. It allows us to sell back to the utility. We have transfer switches. We can transfer from the utility to the photovoltaic inverter. We knew somewhere down the line there were going to be electric cars maybe even fuel cells. So we're wired in such a way that we can power the whole place off of a car that has a fuel cell in it. There's a pigtail down here that allows us to plug in with 240 volt AC power to run the whole show. And so there's a transfer switch here, PG&E off or generator, whether it be a gasoline powered one, a biodiesel powered one, a fuel cell, some other future technology that doesn't exist yet. We're wired so we can go that route when it's finally available. Here's a time of use meter. Uh, we're tied into PG&E. This is how many kilowatt hours we've bought. That's how many we've sold on peak. And this will tell us where we're instantaneously at, this next one. Okay, 0.84. So we're selling back 840 watts of power right now. We have fridges. We have like five refrigerators and two freezers and wine storage. And those cycle on and off with some periodicity. And they all consume electricity, there's no question about it. But we don't do our laundry during the middle of the day because time of use metering uh, is such that we get paid more for electricity uh, from noon until seven o'clock on weekdays. Of course, we have to pay more if we're using it during that period of time too, which we don't want to do. It's the difference between what we're using and what we're producing that is what is the sell back, and we want to be selling back. The arrow tells us where we're at. This arrow is pointing in the direction of where PG&E comes from. That's where we like to see that arrow, selling back. Um, and it's a lot. We get like 32 cents a kilowatt hour on peak, which is great because uh, we buy it for 8 cents a kilowatt hour in the evenings. That's like a 4 to 1 multiplier in our favor. We heat our water, domestic hot water, with a heliodyne solar flat plate collector, taking the heat of the sun and making hot water. It's about 70% efficient compared to the solar panels, which are maybe 15% efficient. It's, it's a better investment. I mean, not to do one or the other. Uh, both are best, but if you can only afford one, hot water is actually the first one to do. I started living with solar actually in 1991. The technology works, no moving parts, very elegant, very sustainable and long-lasting. 